In this video, we're going to take a look at the Fruity Multiband Compressor. What is the Multiband Compressor, first of all? Well, it works in a very similar way to the Fruity Compressor that we looked at in a previous video, except it works in several bands. These bands relate to the frequency of the source audio that is being passed into the multiband compressor. It is split up into three bands, the low band, mid band and high band. The low band obviously works with the low frequencies, mid band works with the mid frequencies and high band works with the high frequencies. Let's take a look at the multiband compressor now so that we can get an understanding of how it works. First of all, what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of FL keys as we always do. We're going to assign it to an empty mixer track, in this case, mixer track 5. We're going to go to the mixer window and we're going to go and scroll over to an empty effects slot, click on it and load up the Fruity Multiband Compressor, which looks like this. You can see here that it has the same controls that we saw in the Fruity Compressor three times over. So we have one set of controls for the low band, one set of controls for the mid band, and one set of controls for the high band. So why would you need to use a multiband compressor? Well, it's particularly useful for being able to compress different parts of the audio in different ways. For instance, you might want to heavily compress the higher frequencies without affecting the lower frequencies. This is particularly useful on things like, for instance, vocals, where you can have a wide range of frequencies. Remember that when we talk about frequencies, we're talking about the pitch of the notes that are being played back within the source audio. So for instance, in a vocal, particularly a large one like, for instance, a choir, you might have a lot of singers singing higher frequencies and some singers singing lower frequencies, all within the same audio, and you might want to compress these different pitches in different ways. Let's just quickly create an FL keys basic pattern and then have a look at how changing some of these settings can change the sound. I'm going to first of all go to my piano roll and just draw in some basic notes and a basic pattern. And control C and control Ving the notes in order to draw out the pattern that you can see here. I'm also just changing this so that it will be in key. What I have done here is I have used a whole range of notes. So I've used notes that go as low as A3 to all the way up to A5, which means that I'm using notes that are being played over two octaves. What this means is I'll have a wide range of frequencies when I compress this. So if we now go into the multiband compressor, I can, for instance, change the settings on the low band and leave the mid and high band so that I'm only compressing the lowest frequencies. For instance, I've got the ratio here by default set to two, which I'll probably keep. I've got a threshold of minus 18. I might want to say raise that to, let's put it to maybe here, and I'm going to increase the gain on this section whilst reducing the gain on the mid frequency and reducing the gain on the high frequency. Let's now have a listen to what the FL keys pattern sounds like without the multiband compressor on, and then let's turn it on so that you can then hear the difference. I'm going to go down to the mixer window and mute the effect as I have done with previous effects and in previous videos. Let's listen back to that now. Now let's turn this back on. 
and play it back. What you can hopefully hear now is that the piano sounds quite dull, and this is because the mid and high frequencies have been dampened as a result of turning them down. All of these controls work in exactly the same way to the fruity compressor, so if you want to just remind yourself of what these controls do, re-watch the fruity compressor video where I explain the differences between the threshold, the ratio, the gain, and so forth. So what we can do is we can define the frequencies within each of these bands using these four controls here. This control affects where the low band frequencies are cut off, whereas this control affects where the mid band frequencies start. You can see that this control overlaps with the control for the low band frequency. The mid band frequency also has an upper control for defining where the mid band frequencies stop. Finally, the high band frequency also has a control for determining where the high band frequency start. You can see that it's possible to actually have a situation where this will overlap, and it's important to try and avoid this because you'll either potentially end up compressing the same frequencies twice over. In this instance, it's better to make sure that these bands cross over each other exactly, and you'll feel that as you try and do this, they will lock into place before allowing you to move them again. Try playing around with these settings yourself so that you can see the effect of them. We also have three more controls here. We have a setting up here which determines the filter type. This is simply the way that the multiband compressor processes the different filters between these bands. So at the end of each band is a filter which is the way that it determines how it defines those bands. You also have a control here for a limiter. Now don't worry too much about this because we'll also have another video on the fruity limiter later on in the course. Finally, we also have a master gain control. This is for controlling the volume of the entire multiband compressor. So I could turn this right the way up without affecting any of the other controls and it would turn up the volume of the FL keys as well. Or I can turn it right the way down. And you'll see that now if I play this back, it's a lot quieter than it was before. Why would you want to change the points at which the low, mid and high band frequencies overlap with each other? Well, different instruments and different audio have different frequencies and you might, for instance, be processing a sound which is slightly higher in pitch overall than another sound and you might want to adjust the frequencies to match. Being able to change these bands gives you a much greater range of flexibility and more options in order to be able to fully process this sound exactly how you wish. Ultimately, the multiband compressor is a very useful effect plugin that you will find yourself using in a whole range of different scenarios.